Dateline, 1906. 1906. January 25th, 1906. In the Washington Post. Poison in the coffee. Negress accused of trying to kill proprietor and guest of hotel. Meridian, Mississippi. July 24th. Anna Nolan, a negress employed at the Lauderdale Spring Hotel, about 50 miles above the city, was arrested this morning, charged with an attempt at wholesale poisoning of the proprietor. Attaches and guest of the hotel. So she tried to poison everybody in the hotel. It is said the woman placed a quantity of rough on rats in the coffee served to the guest for supper last night in retaliation for a real or fancy grievance against the proprietor of the hotel. Two of the guests are reported as seriously ill from the effects of the poison. So think about that, man. 1906, black woman just put rat poison in the fucking hotel she worked at. Poisoned a bunch of white people. Let's see some more stories from back in time. Nine. What was this? Dateline, 1904. From the pages of the New York Times. Mobile, Alabama, June 15, 1904. Miss Joe Holloway, a white woman, 27 years old, was killed last night at Locha Polka by Ada Smith, a negress. The Negro woman cooked for the for a Miss Hartman and had accused Miss Holloway of circulating reports reflecting on her mistress. So the black woman killed the white woman because she was talking shit about the white woman that she worked for. The white woman, the black woman worked for a white woman. And another white woman was talking shit about her white woman. So the, the black woman killed her. All right, don't be talking about my mistress like that. <laughs> mistress don't mean the same thing it meant back then. It means like the head of the house. Another, another rat poison poisoning 1910 1910 ripped from the pages of the Baltimore Sun Dateline May 30th 1910 Washington DC that Nanny Clarkson, the Negro servant, arrested Saturday after the family of Miss Florence D. Barrow of Five DuPont Circle had become seriously ill from rat poison mixed in coffee, has confessed that she attempted to take three lives, is the statement made by Detective Sergeant Fred Cornwell of the central office. He says the woman, Nanny Clarkson, admitted her guilt yesterday when he examined her at the house of detention. Until then, she had been emphatic 
in her denials that she knew anything of the presence of the poison in the coffee. According to the police, Nanny says she doctored the beverage Friday night after a trip to the Barrel Home, where she formerly worked until discharged when several articles were found missing. Oh, so they fired her. They fired this black woman because she cause she was stealing. And then they let her back in the house for some reason. And she came back in there and put rat poison in the fucking coffee. Sisters was using rat poison like a motherfucker back in them days. God damn. That is what uh, my man, that's what they said in Game of Thrones. Poison is a um, woman's tool, man. Women use poison, man. Women are poison. Dateline. Clarksburg, West Virginia. 1903. Ripped from the pages of the Washington Post. Negro shot white man. Says he robbed her chicken coop, but another story is told. Clarksburg, West Virginia. September 19th. Miss Maddie Harris, colored, shot John Openshaw, a white man, aged about 30, at her home about 2 o'clock this morning. Miss Harris is in jail awaiting the result of the wounded man's injuries. The colored woman says that at about midnight, she was aroused by the noise of someone prowling around in her backyard. She got up and saw a man going into her chicken coop and procured a revolver and went out after him. She saw the man as she thought trying to steal her chickens and fired her pistol at him. Other stories, however, do not corroborate that told by the woman. It is said that the man was shot in a quarrel between the two. Openshaw, it is said, had been drinking. The Harris woman has been in other shooting scrapes. So this sister shot a white man. She shot a white man. Nineteen oh three. This sister shot a white man. West Virginia. Shout out to Murray Moss. He says on Long Crime Network there was a video of a Filipino wife poisoning her glider husband with bleach by putting it in his coffee maker every morning. He set up cameras and caught her numerous times. Yeah, women are poor. Women will poison you. Women will poison you. Let me see the last one that I I I, I, did, I read. That was a doozy too. I want to make sure I I, I get y'all that one. Because <clears throat> black people were not afraid of white people back then. I'm telling you, man. Black people were not afraid of white people back then. Black people were not afraid of white people back then. Did I do this one? The 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 the, the black woman put the poison in the coffee. She got fired. And then when the white woman went, she got fired. And then the white woman, she went back. The, the black woman was working for the white woman. She got fired. And then when she went back to get her um, last check, she 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 put um. Rat poison in the woman's coffee pot. Did I do that one? Did y'all hear that one? Or was I muted? Okay, you heard that one. Good, good, good. Um, Negress kills white man. <laughs> uh, 1910. Ripped from the pages of the Washington Post. Dateline. New York, September 26, 1910. James Maiden, the proprietor of the Little Snug Inn on 256 West 13th Street. Make sure I ain't muted. Okay. Was stabbed to death late last night in the kitchen of his home above the saloon. 
Florence Lovett, a colored employee by Maiden as a chambermaid, is a prisoner at Bellevue Hospital charged with the murder. Maiden was attending to the wants of his customers last night when the Lovett woman entered apparently under the influence of liquor. <laughs> okay, so she stabbed, this, this black woman stabbed her employer at the hotel she worked at. Whew. My God, man. My God. Putting poison in people's coffee, shooting white men, and this is just the women. This is just the woman. Press one. This is just the women. Imagine what the men were doing. All right, this is the last one I'm going to do, man. <laughs> this is the last one I'm going to do, man. Nineteen oh seven ripped from the pages of the New York Times. Dateline, Danville, Virginia, April 21st, 1907. While masquerading in male attire, Ellen Elliott, a young Negro woman, was killed late last night by a crowd of white boys. The woman was walking down a road in a Negro settlement just beyond the corporate limits with a Negro man when the white boys came up. A few words passed between them and stones were thrown. The woman, it is declared, pulled a pistol and began firing. <laughs> God, dog. Yo, black women weren't even scared of white people back in those days. They was, if it, yo, if, if a sister, if, if you was white and you got a sister wrong back in them days, it was, you were in more trouble than you would be now. Press one. If you got a sister, if you got crossways with a sister in 1906 as a white person, you were in far more danger than if you did that now. Press one. <laughs> you got Butch Dykes, Butch Dyke Blacks shooting at white boys. Listen, man. Let me let me drop the link. I'm giving you the whole picture, man. I'm giving you the whole picture, man. I'm giving you the whole picture like I used to, man. I used to I used to do these stories all the time, man. Those of you that are new, man. I used to do these old news articles all the time, man. Those of you who ain't who who probably been here for a year, only if you only if you have if you haven't been here longer than a year, you probably don't don't know. We used to do this all the time, man. Give the whole picture. I mean the entire picture. Of what really what 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 what's real, man. Black folk wasn't running around. Yes, the balls. Oh, my Lord. The white man coming to get me. 
If any of these black women got lynched, they probably deserved it. Press one. If any of these black women got lynched, they probably deserved it. Putting fucking rat poison in people's coffee, shooting at people. If any of these black women got lynched, they probably deserved it. And they probably going to call this a lynching. They probably going to call this a lynching. Press one. This was probably considered a lynching. Let me, let me start from the top, man. While masquerading in male attire, Ellen Elliott, a young Negro, was killed late last night by a crowd of white boys. The woman was walking down a road in a Negro settlement just beyond the corporate limits with a Negro man when the white boys came up. A few words passed between them and stones were thrown. The woman, it is declared, pulled a pistol and began firing. One of the white boys felled her to the ground with a beer bottle and she was then stoned and kicked. Joseph Ball acknowledges that he plunged a long dirk several times into her, but asserts that he acted in self-defense. The companion of the woman ran away. That brother, that brother left her ass, man. <laughs> that brother was like, shit, you... You you already got hit upside there with a beer can, man. Ain't she ain't nothing I can do here, man. Um, Thomas Walker, J. Ball, Oscar Netherly, and John B. Talbot are in jail, charged with murder. They confessed they were implicated in 1907. A black woman shot at some white boys. They threw a beer can back, knocked her out, and then stoned her to death, killed her, and they were charged with murder. Yeah, we're going to bring this feature back, man. I'm going to bring this feature. <laughs> I'm going to do one more story, man. One more. One more for the road, man. God, dog, man. And this is just the women. Huh. Dateline, 1912. Ripped from the pages of the Washington Post. Pinehurst, Georgia, June 25th, 1912. Undeterred by the sex of the prisoner, a mob lynched a Negro woman here early today. She had been taken from officers at Cordell, Georgia, and rushed to the scene of her crime in an automobile and hanged to a tree. Anne Boston, the victim, yesterday afternoon fatally stabbed her mistress, Miss R.E. Jordan, the wife of a planter residing at Pinehurst. Her only motive was to avenge a reprimand given her by Miss Jordan. So, we know the mistress means the, the woman of the house. That doesn't mean like anything more than that. The mistress was the woman of the house, just like the master was the man of the house. This black woman killed the mistress of the house that she was working in because she reprimanded her. She was arrested. A mob went down to the fucking police station took her from the fucking police and hung her from a tree.
One more, one more, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> one more, man. One more, man. Dateline 1918. A Negress and five sons shot dead by a posse. Huntsville, Texas. June 1st, 1918. Miss Sarah Cabaness, a Negro, and her sons, George, Pete, Cute, Tanola, and Thomas, are dead. And her daughter, Bessie, is probably fatally wounded as the result of a shooting of Frey in the County Carly today. George Cabaness was shot and killed Thursday afternoon when he resisted officers who had gone to his home to arrest him for threatening APW Allen with a gun and with evading draft service. So the dad was killed on Thursday when they were arre arresting him for pulling the gun on a white guy. The killing of Cabinets aroused the members of his family, it is declared, and they made up their minds. It is said to kill the entire Allen family. So they were going to go kill that whole, that white dude's whole family. <laughs> that, <laughs> and in the, and in that, in that situation, they got killed. Yikes. Um, mm, mm, mm. 